So these are mostly yellow. Sometimes they come in all different colors. Here's one with stripes. It's kind of a bluish black color with little stripes on it. Here's a bright yellow one. You know, in past years, and, and when the early Spanish came to Florida, they used these shells were so common that they would actually make a form of uh, building material called coquina rock, and they actually built the fort at St. Augustine, I think, is built with that kind of rock. I think it's called Ted. So that's how you pick up a ghost crab by the top of the shell. Oops. Right there. And these claws are extremely sharp and they're made for tearing and ripping and cutting. And if they ever get hold of your finger, it's worse than any blue crab. Yes. There's a few in here. See, you've got a couple coming up. But, uh, they're just really patchy. But that's the art of finding coquinas. Whoops, there they all go. They should start to bury back down in the sand, too, after the wave. There goes one right there. There's a bunch of them right here. A beach is probably one of the most specialized parts of the coastal ocean. It has maybe the fewest number of species of most marine habitats, but the species that are here, like coquina clams and mole crabs and ghost crabs, are all extremely specialized for this intertidal environment and for the harshness of the wave action and the sand scour that they're always going to deal with in this environment. So it's a very special place to come to, to a sandy beach. It's not just beach balls. The surf zone of a beach like this is a nursery area. A lot of fish come in here as juveniles and actually grow here when they're in their smallest stages. Things like tonguefish, which are a type of little flounder, and silver sides, uh, pompano, weak fish, things like that. So that's why you have surf fishermen. Surf fishermen know that the larger fish will come in sometimes and feed on uh, animals that are disoriented if there's a lot of wave action. These are coquinas, and uh, this is a, one of the most abundant small clams. It only lives in the surf zone of a sandy beach like this, and it has to have pretty clean water. Uh, there are actually several species here together. They look almost alike, except one grows bigger than the other one does. The Latin names are Donax variabilis and Donax parvula. These are really important animals, not only the most visible ones, but they're one of the major food sources. These are food for a lot of different crabs, especially ghost crabs. When you see ghost crabs on the beach at night, they're usually walking down into the surf zone and they're feeding quite heavily on these. Also, blue crabs and spotted surf crabs like Ovalippes and Irenaeus all eat these things. They actually are very clever at doing what they do. There aren't many animals that can live in the surf zone like this because it's so dynamic, because the sand is always swirling around and the waves are too. There's actually a lot of stuff going on in the surf zone of a barrier island. We come down in the middle of the day and sit on our beach blanket and go out and swim and it doesn't look like there's much there, but there's really a lot going on. You just need to come at night and you would think just walking across the sand. One of the things people see on a beach is shorebirds. People like to walk and see the shorebirds. Uh, most of those are feeding on a falling tide, on animals that are being exposed, that are down in the sand. The, the crustaceans, the amphipods, the uh, polychaete worms, things like that are what they're eating. I mean, maybe they're eating little juvenile coquinas, but once the clams get to be about this big, I think they're too big for most of the shorebirds, but uh, they may be eating some of the smaller ones. These clams themselves feed on plankton out of the water. They're filter feeders. Like many animals in the ocean, they actually pump water through their bodies and filter the, the microscopic organisms in the plankton out. That's why they have to be in the surf zone. Every wave that comes in is a new supply of food for them, and they're highly adapted for getting that food out of the water. These were live clams. They're empty shells now. It's getting towards fall of the year and they're at the end of their annual life cycle. 
and they complete their life cycle and die off just like anything else. They're not all consumed by predators. Some of them just die at the end of the life cycle. And so they've spent their year filtering and, and marching up and down the beach and living the life of a coquina. And now the shells are what's left. And some of them might end up picked up and put on somebody's porch at a beach house. Others will just break down and the shells will eventually dissolve and the calcium will go back into the sand and into the water and then next year it'll be available for our new baby clams to grow their shells. They'll absorb the calcium out of the water and make their shells and the whole cycle will start all over again with next year's generation of coquinas.